Hey everybody, this is Rhino, and we're back to Chariot. This game one is at 16%, so we'll uh, let's go ahead and continue and jump into the next level. There's really no reason to change the items you equip to anything like that, since none of the items are playing an active role from uh, level to level. There is... An interesting question, certainly, as to whether there is really a lot of value in every single game having, uh, hmm, I guess we're pulling, uh, every single video game potentially having a percentage around its uh, uh, completion rate, like, Particularly, I think, like, RPGs probably don't benefit much from things like that. Like, it, it would be weird, certainly, to find an RPG that says, Oh, you're 50% completed because there would just be so many uh, side quests, potentially. I think this one, well, this may be trouble, as it were. So I can jump here. Well, I might as well just reset because I can't get on top. So I need to have jumped up here to drag that with me. Hmm. Hmm. And yeah, we're losing gold. This level is called the Hive, so almost certainly it's going to be full of looters. And it is just so incredibly dark. Um, I have a thing, a phrase I like to use when I look at every single game that comes out on Steam. Uh, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday when I'm streaming, uh, live streaming. And that phrase is Dark Screenshot Syndrome. Uh, what it effectively means is that if the game developer's decisions as far as screenshots end up with a significant portion of the screen surrounded in blackness, then there's, hmm, there, there's definitely a uh, poor decision that was made if you if your screenshots are mostly dark and that is exactly what we're having here is just major major issues as far as Like, really just, like, major, major issues as far as not being able to see things. Hmm. Arguably, it's kind of a sign that you don't even care because your second major section of the map has a frustration of darkness. Your next major section of the map is going to have a frustration of snow, which arguably maybe with the snow tires that stops being a case uh, of real frustration. But what they've what they're hiding here, or at least what it feels like they're hiding here is is even their own realization that this just does not work as an idea 
uh, there's just way too much repetition. And because there's too much repetition, they've, they're trying to hide it. Hide it in darkness. Hmm. And more and more, it is going to just turn into a case where the only efficient way to even play this game is going to be resetting a lot. And at, at what point do you just decide it's not worth your time? Like, the game really needed to show me something new. And I don't have yet to see something new. Honestly, I'm thinking it may be just time to rage quit. Like, I like to stick to games. I don't, I don't want to just rage quit on them. For, for kind of simplistic reasons, such as the game just kind of sucking. <clears throat> but at a certain point, you have to also just kind of realize when the game is just wasting your time, making you do the same thing over and over again. This level of repetition really unacceptable. Like, if the next item, we didn't know it was a snowshoe. If we thought snowshoe maybe would do something new or better for, for doing the previous levels. Like, where am I even supposed to go? At this point. Hmm. Like. There is basically no branching path. Hmm. What am I supposed to be doing? Like, you can see on these platforms, too, how there's really not a lot of saving graces. Like, not, not a lot of extra, well, basically no extra platforms that you could fall to and would just prevent you from falling. This really does kind of feel like it just has that whole Jump King mentality. Of... If you mess up, you will f potentially fall all the way back to the beginning of the game. And that is definitely not the kind of game I want to play, ever. And it is kind of funny because... A, apparently we're getting some new jump platforms that are going to be bounce platforms. So is this really getting to a point where perhaps I, with him, am going to start bouncing as a new physics element? See, part of the problem, though, is he is yanking me up, and he seems to be bouncing as much, if not more. This really feels like this is just going to boil down to um, 
I need to bounce with timing, not crash into the guy. And then, I don't know what I'm really supposed to do. Like, I can't get up higher. He goes through that area. This gets me up to that point, I guess. Does that get me where I need to go, though? But even there, you can see that the game has not really planned for you to ever bounce even slightly far away from a character. And now we've got some foreground imagery for the first time in the game, which that seems like that should have been a gimmick that would have existed earlier. <clears throat> Am I going up the right direction, taking this path, or am I potentially just leading myself to some side quest collectible? Give myself some more room. Going the wrong way seems like you are just effectively going to be punished now anytime you go the wrong way by being attacked by the looters, which is a very minimal punishment, certainly, but not a welcome, welcome challenge. Knows how I am using the phrase punishment and not challenge or, or, Opportunity. Hmm. 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 I go up diagonally, which means it was here. Which means that whole area was just a punishment area. Although, in all fairness, if you are going to get 100% of a level, you either in one run or in multiple run runs are going to have to deal with that anyways. There's no getting around. having to visit all of the map if there's a reward for visiting all of the map. Yeah, it's fairly early, like three hours into this game, to, to potentially say I may just rage quit this game after this, this section, but... I honestly feel like I may just rage quit this game after after this section. Like Is it the case that the looters actually make it harder to move the cart? Don't think it really does. Hmm. Hmm. One of the things, certainly, that the why this does not work 
as a concept is definitely around the idea of I feel like I could probably bounce on that but it's not really working you use this kind of platforming and maneuverability challenges in every game so I effectively get enough of this like struggling to get from one platform to another platform fairly often in games and fairly often in video games that it that is a frustrating part of video games it's not something that i'm like really enthusiastic about or enjoy I don't even know where I'm supposed to be going, let alone how I'm supposed to get up to where I'm supposed to be going. Yeah, I need the cart to bounce well higher, Which means I need it out of the way, I need it bouncing. I need myself bouncing. It's not going to be all one smooth motion. Yeah. It might be easiest just to come over here and be on somewhat somewhere around the ground okay yeah and they've made this worse because There is a secondary two-star, like, you'll get a reward if you go this way, also, section. My only hope here. So there's all these kind of like platforms here. But that definitely feels like that is just the gimmick of this level. And I don't know why you'd specifically call this the hive if that's the only gimmick of this level was to bounce around and then get into this section. Hmm. 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 Ah. I'm gonna lose momentum here and then that's gonna wow that was worth a thousand and yet the sound of getting the 1000 caused all these looters to come and so I think I lost potentially like 250 gold there Hmm. 
Oh, and see, this really just highlights the problem with this concept is that it can pull me in an equal amount as they can pull, I can pull it. Nobody's foot is firmly planted on the ground. I am at a zero now as far as gold. So if that was any concern to me, which I don't care about it, but if I did care about it, you would be really frustrated now instead of just being somewhat frustrated by... Like, I, I don't know how you do this. You Are you supposed to put yourself this way? But only a little bit? It is odd how the rope shortens and lengthens at its own command. Come on. I've got to get myself to this platform. Okay, I guess maybe I'm supposed to be jumping the other direction. That might also play a role. Since I can jump through the ghost part. It's dragging it up this track. Yeah. Honestly, I'm probably not as good, or I probably stick to games a little too much. If if you're having an experience like this, and you're just saying, you know what, I'm not liking it, I'm not seeing anything different here that makes it seem like I would potentially like like the game, I probably should quit. Even Steam effectively is telling you that if it's a two hour no question asked policy, you should, gamers in general, should shift their, their evaluation time down a little bit more to the point where they should be certain in less than two hours whether or not they want to continue. Now, one of the complaints about the two hours no questions asked policy certainly has been that, well, there might be some games out there that add content that's really fun after the two-hour point, or that games would will increasingly front-load all the good quality content. Of course, the problem with that argument is to say, is the assumption that that is not already happening, um, which... That is really not the case. It has always been the case that video games have front-loaded the vast majority of their good content um, at, at the beginning. Because they have always known that many, many gamers do not actually make it that far. Let's look at this map. I would say this game either is front loading all of its good content and it really just doesn't have much to show or it is made effectively a fatal mistake and yeah second we're getting massively increased numbers of these looters 
that whole encounter was negative 230. How you can actually be at negative gold, I don't know, but boy, does that sound frustrating, potentially, if if we actually found out that I'm losing gold. We're at negative 1,000, negative 1,300. Like, if it actually sucked gold away from me. Boy, would that be annoying. And I could see maybe thinking, well, that might encourage a small percentage of players to to want to play more. But... But the percentage of players that would want to play more are probably people that would have wanted to play more anyways. These guys are also just not backing off. You'd think that there, it would be kind of more like a wave. Okay. Jump to the next platform. use that that was kind of an interesting twist but there, there aren't enough twists there aren't enough gimmicks for every interesting section there it is accompanied by an entrance and an exit section of crawling through walls which this is just wasting time that's all this is this is can we have you do something that is supposed to be so simplistic that you should have been able to pull it off anyways? All right. And then, yeah, it seems like the game has actively taken pity on you now and given you a way to... Um, To regain a bunch of gems since you would have lost a bunch of gems. Hmm. Like I was definitely at negative numbers until I hit that one room. And that really sucked. And so what did we get for that level? Not one step closer towards collecting one of these. Not one step closer towards collecting this. Uh, we got some extra gold. We didn't get any skulls. And we have the prismatic eye, which should be the last of this section. What's funny is I still do kind of feel like the warp beacon would be the best object to use. And it's still not an object I'm using. Hmm. Interestingly enough, I did not see a point where I could have gotten the Not really seeing a point where I could have gotten the extra piece for the snowshoes. So I almost wonder if there's going to be a 2 6 level. And honestly, I'm just running out the clock at this point. I think I'm done with this game. I I really would question like I I really would have to question whether I'd want to play any more of this. I don't like the timing on the bouncing by the way. It's bad to say the least. And now 
this chariot is being bounced back and forth, so it actively is in the way. You're falling down, you only have a brief window in the panning, which does not pan fast enough that you could actually press the A button. And in this case, it's also sending me up ah. Is there anything like I'm, I'm stretching my mind here to say if there's anything more that I'd want to do and I just don't think there is let's see return to the map would lose all your progress save and quit would quit options there was no difficulty settings on here there is this ridiculous Phillips Hughes selection. Would this have been any better with co-op? I mean, inherently, maybe that is the reason why so many people try to push co-op as a feature is because it, if there was two people playing, they might just feel this obligation uh, like, I could see feeling an obligation to continue to play this game, whereas a single player can just rage quit on their own rage. Although it's fairly easy also to say, hey, let's let's play something different or let's stop playing for a while. Um, yeah. We know there are three exits, actually, to this level. So... Two exits to this level but it seems like you pretty much would have to go back and just find a second exit to this level hmm is there anything we didn't really find in this first section hmm it feels like at some point you might benefit from having a compass or something that would point towards a uh, something that would point towards a, a, a collectible. Hmm. Hmm. So the stasis field might be useful. Hmm. Hmm. Let's just let the guy shut up. Yeah. I don't see a reason to continue playing. Uh, I'm not having a fun. I haven't really been having fun since the beginning. Like, even this first level really wasn't that interesting. And that was where we were trying to play it more like a Metroidvania. You have this whole speed run concept and there really is just no skills or abilities that we've unlocked at a slightly less than halfway point in the game we're, we're potentially two-fifths of the way there oh i guess the king these are the king's kids not just servants i thought they were servants but whatever when you look at all these achievements, they do want you just to run around and collect all the skulls and do a bunch of extra stuff. But if the core gameplay mechanic is not there, it's just not there. Yeah. Let's see if we can come back here. Nick kind of sucks i think it is worth pointing out certainly um 
this is one of those games that sells itself as an ultimate edition that also includes a soundtrack and DLC. So I probably got screwed financially in this game that I'm not even going to bother to finish. Uh, decent amount of people here programming. Like, it's hardly a one-person job. Um, although, even if it was a one-person job, it still wouldn't matter that much. I, I appreciate the small amount of... Uh, of voice acting but there's definitely not enough of this and almost certainly we saw there that this was funded by a can can canada media fund so inherently there was a a level of robbing the citizens of canada to make a game that i don't think that many people wanted and that may very well explain why there isn't really that interesting of a game here it definitely makes sense that i've never seen anybody else try to copy this concept um, if you were going to copy this concept it would probably be very low effort and you'd sell it for uh, like 99 cents on steam you wouldn't try and sell it as a full game <clears throat> Yeah, and there, there really is just nothing that fixes this game. Um, you effectively, I think, would have to... You'd have to change the main gameplay mechanic quite a bit. You would have to think of the chariot more as a tank. Um, if that's the way it was uh, going to go. There, there needed to be a way you could actually ride the chariot and drive the chariot and then you could have some driving physics and eventually add a turret and move around like that that doesn't fix a lot of things but it does fix a lot of the controls and it gets away from the um the concept yeah that just pops up the steam overlay um that does kind of fix the the controls system somewhat in the, the um uh but it doesn't really it doesn't really fix the vast majority of this i'm actually watching the chariot royal guard gadget pack dlc at the moment even though you can't see it and it's showing some gameplay footage it's showing playing as the shopkeeper it is, seems like maybe the shopkeeper has omni boots enabled by default and can walk on lava it's definitely showing different sections of the game and it, it seems feels like there's a lot more shooting going on with two players yes you could have somebody shooting at the thieves a little bit more often um, and it does seem like maybe you could use stasis or something to bounce the chariot with two players a little bit better but i definitely am not seeing a different game and that's what this would have to be it would have to be a different game um, probably more of a metroidvania uh, you've you've taken the concept of an escort quest to the extreme having it be over 100 percent escort quest for the entire game and you've also made it a fairly frustrating escort quest compared to just having a random npc following you and doing its own pathfinding um, and you've made something that is challenging certainly but challenge alone does not make a good game and that is a mistake I think a lot of game developers make is that they think they can just make something challenging and that's good enough. And it, it isn't. Uh, Jump King, similar type of game. Also a game that I obviously can recognize from day one I would never want to play. Because having the challenge of doing something like Jump King is not fun to me. 
falling and losing progress is not fun to me. I don't think it's fun to most players. There is a small percentage of people that do find some enjoyment in being frustrated, but I think a lot of people that play the games like Jump King and Chariot probably would have been more successful had it come out as a single player game a little bit later than 2014, back uh, when streamers really were getting a lot of views. Uh, if it had come out, say, in 2020, it probably would have gotten more reaction streamers to play it. Uh, but that's not really going to sell a game in the long run or ha make a good game that's relevant if you just have convinced a bunch of streamers to play your game and overreact to falling. Um, yeah. Uh, if you, we were really going to make this work, you probably would want something closer to that double fine game called The Cave. That's a game where you can, uh, you play as two or three different characters, but it's still a single player game. And you solve unique bespoke puzzles in the cave based on the characters you select. Um, so it doesn't have a ton of replayability, but it has more replayability probably than Chariot does. Because I couldn't imagine too many people would play Chariot's levels more than twice. Like once to find all the content, twice to do any cleanup, and maybe a speed run. Um, but yeah, I think going with the cave would be a great comparison to this if this game played like this. It, it, its animation style is not even that far off from what the cave was like. And that was the cave was much more slower paced, definitely wasn't really a fetch quest. Had actual puzzles instead of just platforming. Uh, if I wanted to play a platforming game, which I probably never would, I think you fall in the category of just wanting to do uh, Mario Brothers. Like, just going back to Super Mario Brothers 1, 2, and 3, Super Mario World um, for Super NES, uh, and then eventually working your way to, like, Super Mario 64. Uh, you don't even really need to do deep dives to other Mario games or any other genre. Um, the fact that the chariot in this game is so slow is also a problem because certainly if they had the panning programmed better so that the panning on the screen moved way faster, you might get to the point where the chariot moves so fast that it was closer to like a Sonic game. And certainly they could have embraced that idea too. If there was just a very high level of safety in chariot um, and you could just run from the left side of the screen to the right side of the screen and never really be at risk of losing uh, momentum or taking damage, that'd be great. That's the thing that really, I think, would have improved even Sonic games, is that even when you are playing Sonic 1, 2, or 3, there's always that character that you have to have memorized was there, that bad guy that you'll crash into, or that spike wall that you'll crash into. And then, unless you've memorized it, you won't have a good experience, which makes a very wide divide between somebody who has memorized the levels in Sonic and the speedrunning Sonic versus somebody playing Sonic for the first time. But Chariot certainly could have been like that. It could have been very much like, all right, we've created a bunch of roller coaster levels. There could be a lot of splits where you press A to jump or go down. Um, there could be looters chasing after you the whole time, and you could be shooting uh, them away. Um, but yeah, adding a lot of speed to a game that wants to have speed runs would, would have definitely helped. Um, inherently, games that are as slow as this shouldn't have speed run modes. It is, frankly, insulting to um, to say, he, here's a speed run to a game that is really not capable of being speed run. So, yeah... I think we end it here. Uh, 
45 minutes into an episode is just fine. 18% into a game definitely isn't fine. I can say, yes, I've gotten six achievements, but uh, there is 36, 37 more, no, 40 more to to go. So we made no progress really in that direction either. And I would say I, I don't feel like this is just a I'm not feeling it rage quit. Uh, yes, I'm not feeling the game, but in the past, sometimes I've rage quit games and thought, maybe I'm just not in the mood for it. I don't think I'd ever be in the mood for Chariot. Um, and definitely, I need to be better about picking the kinds of games I want to play, because I I don't have a lot critical to say about a game that I don't completely finish, and people uh, understandably hate when video game critics don't play a game all the way through. Although they mostly hate when people don't play the game all the way through and then give it a glowing review. And that is hardly what I'm doing at this point. I am saying skip it, in my opinion. By all means. Uh, but yeah, that's going to be it for this series. As always, it's helpful for YouTubers if you like and share on other social media sites and subscribe. Uh, to the channel uh, subscriptions in particular is something that small content creators like me definitely need more than anything then there's a bunch of backup social media sites in the description if you want to make sure you get notifications of new videos and then if you want to support me even further there's a link to patreon or you can friend me on steam and give to me a game off my wish list or gift card also there is a playlist tab on my youtube main page if anybody ever even goes to those uh where i have a playlist for every single game i've covered there's quite a lot of them so check that out i'm sure you can find something more interesting to fall to watch and for the most part i have played every other game all the way through i probably rage quit over i probably played about a hundred games and rage quit maybe five of them so I still have a fairly high percentage, but maybe as I'm getting older, I'm becoming a little less tolerant for bad games. That's going to be it for this recording. Thank you for watching. Have a good evening.